Hey, hello friends. Uh, this is uh, Sarah Vanderf and I am excited to join you uh, right now to talk about one of my passions. It's about bringing moving into the math classroom, uh, specifically around uh, things that'll bring discourse into the mathematical uh, math room as well. So um, I'd love to connect with you anytime on these topics. Uh, that's where you can find me. Uh, I write at sarahvandorf.com and I'm very active on Twitter. Um, so I hope you will join me there. Um, you can read more about what I'm talking about in this video at sarahvandorf.com. And if you're finding me on YouTube, I hope you will subscribe. So in the first of three videos, so this is part one, we're going to explore what is a circle and how we can bring movement into that. So 2020 is the year of math movement. Um, so uh, when I am introducing the concept of a circle to my students, and this can come uh, anytime, one of the things that I'm thinking about as I'm doing that is some of the stuff I've learned about circles in the past. Um, if you've ever looked at child's uh, books around uh, shapes and you look at all the circles in the these books, almost all of them display a circle as a disc. And students uh, get this misconception that a circle is a disc. Um, in fact, if you ask a lot of people what a circle is, um, they will, and say, like if you have them draw a circle and say put your finger on it, they will put their finger somewhere inside of the outer ring of the circle and say, that's a circle. It's a clue, it's some formative assessment that they might not have a deep understanding of what a, a mathematical definition of a circle is. And so I wanted to share with you what I've done to help students understand what a circle is so that when they put their finger on the circle, they put their finger uh, on the edge of that circle on that collection of points that's there. So here's what it looks like in my classroom. As always, every day in my classroom, I'm trying to move. And so in this activity, I'm gonna ask uh, my students that I want two volunteers who are ready, uh, willing to sh uh, stand on chairs. Um, they don't have to stand on chairs, it just makes it a little more obvious. And so then uh, I will get one student, I'll ask them to stand in a particular space in the room, uh, and I'll ask another student to stand on a chair and stand in that space. When they're doing that, it looks a little bit like this. I have two students, and if you imagine that white space as my classroom, I ask a student, uh, the orange student there, to stand uh, on a chair somewhere um, towards the center of the room. And I don't use, say the word center, I just direct them to a location. And I ask another student, I'll call that student the green student, to stand on a chair um, some um, distance away. Um, and I say to the rest of the class who's sitting at this point, I will ask my class to notice the distance between those two people. And then I will call out a third person and I will say, I want you to stand in a place so that the uh, you are standing the same distance away from the orange person as the green person is currently standing from them. And so I'll call out the name of a student, ask them to stand in that location. Almost always that student will go and stand uh, at a place, at a point that's uh, along a line um, on the exact opposite direction of them. But uh, I'll then call the next person and I'll say, I want you to do the same thing. They generally will stand in a location, something like this, another student, and then another student and so on and so on. And eventually I, I say to the whole class, I want everyone to stand up so that you're in a place that's that same distance the green student is from the orange student. And so eventually the whole class stands up and this is what my classroom looks like. Now you might be like, I don't have a big enough classroom uh, to do this. You know, like I got desks and tables everywhere. So do I, guess what we do? We just move those tables and chairs out of the way. I had 40 some students in a very crowded classroom. I've done this many, many times and we just make it work and I tell students, to stand and, you know, if they need to move things, it's easy to move back. After we're all standing there, I'll say to my students, I'll say, students, what do you notice about us? And I'm uh, somewhere in that uh, outer ring with them. And my students will shout out, we're standing in a circle. And I will say, but I never told you to stand in a circle. Like I never once used the word circle. In fact, I'm very conscious that I don't use that word circle. So what do you mean we're standing in a circle? And then I will direct a class conversation about what does it mean for it to be a circle? And they'll, you know, students might say things like, well, we're standing around the person in the middle. And I'll 
continue to push for details and could uh, push for things. And eventually students will start to say things like, well, we're all um, standing the same distance from the person in the center. And we'll start uh, talking about that each of us represents a point. And we'll talk about, well, could more students, like if we could get all the students in the school, what would happen if that we were all standing there? And they would talk, they talk about how eventually there'd be so many spaces that it would be filled up and that we could connect all those things with a, uh, a curve. And so we talk about that that curve is a collection of all kinds of people, all kinds of points. Um, and they're all the same distance from that point um, in the center. Uh, one of the questions I ask uh, while we're doing that is just, I just keep pushing back on what is a circle, what is a circle um, as we're doing that. Um, and eventually I'll ask, what about that person in the middle? Are they part of the circle? And this always, we spend always a couple minutes on this because some people argue that that is part of the circle. Um, and some uh, people will talk about, well, no, that just defines uh, that person standing there isn't part of the circle, but they are uh, very important because they define where the rest of us stand. And so we'll have some ongoing conversations uh, about that. As we're talking in this circle, I um, am always pressing people to turn to their neighbor and repeat the things that we've been saying and getting all students to talk out loud about this idea of what does it mean to be a circle. What is a circle? I then rely on some uh, a math language routine. If you've never heard of the University of Stanford math language routine, sometimes uh, they're abbreviated to be called MLRs. I highly recommend uh, you look them up. You can also find them. Uh, I'll link to them on my blog so that you can find them there. Um, but there are eight math language routines that allow for students to become better at communicating, whether it be uh, communicating as listeners, writers, or uh, speakers. And one of my favorite of the eight routines is that first one. It's a routine called Stronger and Clearer Each Time. So after we've had the discussion standing, what I will have my students do is I'll have them all take their seats and we'll engage in this routine called Stronger and Clearer Each Time. I love this routine as well because it's a routine that includes more movement in it. So I have students sit down and I have them write their first draft of defining a circle based on what we talked about in the center of the circle. So I'll be, I'll have, I'll demand that the class is silent for that time. I'll demand that all students put pens to papers. I'll tell them they can draw pictures if they want, but I also want some words. What is a circle? Please write a definition, your best definition. It's just our first draft. Don't worry about it. Just do the best you can uh, for defining a circle. And I'll give them somewhere between 60 seconds to three minutes, depending on um, what's going on with them. I'll then ask them to put their pens and pencils down and just take a moment to plan what they're going to say because I'm going to have them read their first draft and discuss that um, with another person. I said, we're better together and we're going to all help each other write a really good definition. So I'll have them, uh, once they've had some time to think, I'll stand up and I will have both of them read out loud without discussing it um, until they both read out loud their definitions that they've written so far with one other person. So I have partners, not groups of three or four, just partners. And I always say, go find someone that's, um, you know, at a different table than you're currently sitting at. And so I'll have them share and then I'll yell out switch and I'll have them switch and do the same thing with a second person. What happens as I listen in when they're sharing with the second person, they take some of that knowledge from the first person and they start to weave it in. Also what happens as the students are reading their own definitions, they catch a lot of their mistakes. Isn't that what good writers do? Is when we read out loud, we catch some of the things we were hoping to say and their thoughts become clearer um, each time that they're sharing this information. What I then do is ask all my students to sit down and I say the following to them. No matter if you like your first definition and you love it perfectly, I want everyone to start over, even if you have to rewrite what you wrote the first time and write your second draft of what is a circle write the definition of circle. And again, I'll give them a couple of minutes to write that definition. Um, as we share these, this is the routine stronger and clearer each time. And again, this is just us creating better and better drafts of our work. We'll have them then read them out loud to the person they're sitting next to. A lot of them will look something like this. A circle is a bunch of, uh, a bunch of points, so many that they make a curve. Every point on the curve is the same distance from a point in the center. 
and that distance is called a radius. So you can see, you know, in our earlier discussion with students, we might have used words like circumference or radius when we were standing in that circle. And here a student has worked that in. Eventually, after we've looked at lots of drafts, some other words start to fall into what students write. And sometimes they'll include pictures. A circle is a locus. That would be a new word. Uh, to my students, but we're going to add that word to them. Even if I'm teaching middle school and that word's not important for the standards right now, that doesn't mean my students can't handle that. It's a collection, and I'll, I'll pair those words together, a collection of points that are the same distance or equal distance from a central point, and uh, the picture sometimes can help do that. Again, um, we'll continue to do that, but ultimately what we're doing is we're defining a circle, and so then I'll have them sit down, um, after we've written this definition and I'll say on your paper, everybody draw a circle and they all draw a circle and I'll say, okay, I want everybody to put your finger on the circle and I watch and about a third of my students still are putting their picture in uh, their hand on the center because that idea of a circle being a disc and all that inside space being part of the definition of a circle is hard for them to break but a lot more students are putting their fingers on the edge of the circle. When I point this out, a lot of students are like, oh yeah, I didn't realize that. And they quickly put their finger um, on the edge of the circle. And it really reinforces this idea of what a circle is. So I am asking you, uh, as you think about uh, circles and when circles come up in your classroom, like do something where you can move to define what a circle is and do things. I hope you'll join me um, in video two and three, because I have lots more ideas that you can be doing while you're standing in the circle, including ideas for Pi Day. But again, uh, you can find me at saravandorf.com. Uh, That's where I have written more about this. Um, and you can find my other videos on my uh, blog, but you can also find them on YouTube. If you're following me on YouTube, please click subscribe and uh, like things and join me um, as I continue to make more videos about mathematics. So thank you.